I got it. Roman numeral X, that means 10, right? Has there been a weapon 9? And we seen the guy before. And he said no. Deadpool was always different than all the other X-Men. And different than really any other comic book. Partly because he breaks the fourth wall. Partly because the tone is so satirical. This shit's gonna have nuts in it. Rob, when a challenge to Cable, that's gonna be different than the things Cable normally fights, which was other big burly men. Deadpool's gonna be a lot faster, a lot more acrobatic. As far as his dialogue and how he would talk, Rob just said, whatever you want to do. Okay, we're playing at the Cleveland Brown. And in my mind, I'm playing with Schwarzenegger and Deadpool as a Dan DeVito character. And so in the comic book origin, it would be wrong with that. Rob's original description, okay. which is he wanted a mercenary by way of Spider Man. So I thought to myself, all right, Spider Man with the quips and the sarcastic attitude and all that, just make it a little darker. So I started to make him a wise ass. I made him sarcastic. You big wrong cock dog. You really gonna fuck this up? Okay, we'll play. We got the rest. We've been a throwaway character, but we started to get letters in. For the kids at home, a letter is something you write and put in an envelope and put a stamp on it and mail it. Well, we're gonna we'll take the first for touchdown. We get about this many letters. For New Mutants '98, Deadpool's first issue, we got this many letters. Over seventy percent of them, somewhere in the letter, said that guy was funny. Bring him back. I don't know. When I started writing Deadpool, we wanted to make sure that we put a lot of layers into him okay. that would evolve over the course of time. I uh, really saw Deadpool as an nihilist on the surface. He acted like he didn't care, and he wanted to make. What are we on for dinner? Okay. I'm gonna watch this. Mm -hmm. You're really gonna fuck this up for me? He could just as easily have been a throwaway character, but we started to get letters in. For the kids at home, a letter is something you write and put in an envelope and put a stamp on it and mail it. Normally, for New Mutants, we'd get about this many letters. For New Mutants 98, which was that first issue, we got this many letters. Over 75% of them, somewhere in the letter said, that guy was funny, bring him back. It is fun when I started writing Deadpool, yeah. we wanted to make sure that we put a lot of layers into him and that he would evolve over the course of time. I really saw Deadpool as an nihilist on the surface. He acted like he didn't care, and he wanted to make sure that you knew he didn't care. I'm trying to hear this. We wanted to make sure that you knew he didn't care. And you're not here, like a sort of teenage warhead. Can we trade names? So a lot of the humor came out of that. So grabbing her and then maybe like putting my hand down like yeah, like we're trying to stop. For me, the Deadpool journey started in. About 2004 was when I first kind of heard about it. I was doing a movie for New Line Cinema at the time, and they brought it up to me, introduced me to the comics, sent a bunch of them over to me, and I read them, and I just kind of fell in love with that whole world. X Men Origins Wolverine came out where Ryan first portrayed Deadpool. The version of Deadpool in the Wolverine movie is very different than the Deadpool of the comics. The Wade Wilson part was interesting, and that was not too far off canon, but Deadpool himself was not. I wouldn't even consider that a portrayal of a character. That was something else that happened to a guy named Wade Wilson. Right after Wolverine Origins, Ryan Reynolds used his leverage to get Deadpool option as its own film. Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? When we had this opportunity to go back and make a Deadpool movie, the most important intention of the film was to go back to the tone and the essence of the comics. And to make him the Merc with the Mouth. Yeah, let's get it People fall in love with characters for a reason, and a lot of times when they make movies, the filmmakers change quintessential elements of the character. I don't want to do that. One of the things we come back to as comic book fans and readers is character and tone. Because story changes from issue to issue, but character and tone remain pretty consistent. Tim's interpretation, along with Ryan's, of Deadpool is so head-on. It's very true to the character. And with a guy like Ryan playing the lead, it has all the appeal and all the charisma that this character has and needs and exhibits all the time. So you put a gift card in your mouth? There's some things we couldn't do that I'm sure the fans will miss. Like Deadpool has multiple personalities. It's pretty easy to do that in a comic because you see different colors pretty hard to do on film without making it completely confusing so that's one of the things I'd like to explore maybe there's a way to do that if we're so fortunate as to do another film. Oh,
It's like old lady cats in here. This is sort of like a Deadpool Corp creative collective that has managed this for the last six years. And that's Tim Miller, that's Rhett Reese, that's Paul Warnick, and me as well. We've just been sort of developing it slowly but surely over those years. Our agent presented us with a comic and said that Fox is going to try and reinvent the character after what happened with Wolverine. We did this the old fashioned way with two swords. And maximum effort. Deadpool's a character that really spoke to us. He's a very complex anti-hero, caught in a shame spiral, self-deprecating, kind of self-loathing, and they say, you know, write what you know, so we really latched onto it. We originally pitched a non-origin story, interestingly, like just a Deadpool adventure, and we pitched to Ryan Reynolds, and he enjoyed the pitch, but he was pretty emphatic about the fact that it had to be an origin story, so ultimately what happened was we kind of melded the two. If you think about it as a Canadian mercenary with lead pipe cruelty, and he's morally flexible and he's <coughs> cancer and he's scarred. These are all sort of items that a lot of studios wouldn't necessarily be anxious to put up on the screen. Books are everything. You ever heard David Beckham speak? It's like he mouth sex to can of helium. Think Ryan Reynolds got this far on a superior acting method? Ryan Reynolds is <laughs> forgetful. He's just one of the fans over every day. Every day. He just gets it. He's got that rogue. Sorry, Timmy, I'm, I'm, Timmy, I'm going with gameplay. Cancer, it's curiously scarred. These are all sort of items that a lot of studios wouldn't necessarily be anxious to put up on the screen. Books are everything. You ever heard David Beckham speak? It's like he mouth sex to can of helium. Think Brian Reynolds got this far on a superior acting method? Ryan Reynolds, as the ambassador of Deadpool, is just one of the fans over every day. He just gets it. He's got that rogue, badass quality. He's just got that lift. He's just so quick with the quips. He was like sexiest man in the world. He has a huge female following. My freshman year of high school, I may or may not have photoshopped myself into a picture with Ryan. <laughs> I was really obsessed with Ryan for a good while. Like, his name is on, like, the walls. No. My childhood room. Like, the graffiti. Ryan Reynolds. I had to mention that she used to have a I was really obsessed with Ryan for a good while. Like, his name is on, like, the walls in my childhood room. Like, the graffiti, Ryan Reynolds. I kind of mentioned that she used to have some kind of Photoshop pictures of me. Yeah, she did mention something about that. And then we awkwardly moved past it. Ryan was born to play this role. His personality and his DNA is really infused in this character. This character of Deadpool was just made from heaven for Ryan Reynolds or Ryan was made for it. Either way, there is something about Deadpool that accesses the entire range of Ryan Reynolds. The comedy, the romance, the action, things that most actors, when they're lucky, can do one or maybe two of. But Ryan actually does have the ability to do all of those things. Ryan really is my poet. He's got this boy next door, nice guy look about him, and he really is that guy. He's literally the nicest guy I've ever met. But he's also nasty. This isn't a duplex. It's chlamydia holding still. Is that improv? This sort of edgy bit of humor that is very 12-year-old juvenile kid in a locker room. People say, kiss the girl, crack a joke, and shoot a gun. And Deadpool slash Wade does all those things in the movie, and Ryan does too. Yeah, like I got bit by a Okay. In issue number two of Cable and Deadpool, which came out in 2004, I had Deadpool describe himself as looking like a Sharpay crossed with Ryan Reynolds. Ooh. So I feel like I actually originally cast Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Andre, take uh, half a step to your left. Uh, you, uh, okay, Ryan a regular person half a step. <laughs> when Tim came on, we just knew from right at the beginning he was the perfect guy for this. He got the comic book world. He understands it. He lives in that world. Tim just kind of has a bit of that Wade Wilson serving attitude in him, and he sort of speaks, moves, and talks like that. And I think it really helped him access the character. He really kind of understood the character. Yeah. When Tim came in, Fox wanted Tim to prove that he could make this movie, essentially. You know, a guy who doesn't have any film credit, that's like trying to get a credit card for the first time without having any credit. It's tough, so you have to show them in some way. You have to give them some, some living, breathing 
three-dimensional proof. So what he did was he took the fight inside the SUV, which was in the screenplay, and he created a two-minute piece that captured that fight from start to finish. And it was just phenomenal. Let's hope these guys are wearing their brown hats. It's a proof of concept, both in terms of the techniques that he wanted to use in order to make this film, which were pretty revolutionary. That it encapsulated the spirit of Deadpool, the tone, the company, and Ryan's voice. Hola! Me llamo Pestina de la Muerta. Test footage was never meant for the eyes of anyone other than studio executives at Fox. It was meant to just be a loose example of what we could do with this character and how we could kind of bring it to life. It didn't convince Fox at the time to make the movie, so it sat there for a long time. The writers, Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese, and the director, Tim Miller, and Ryan reached out to me directly. The title of the emo was Deadpool Needs Your Ass, and then inside the emo it said Assistance, completing the word ass. Will you reach out to the studio and give us some support? There have been a lot of talk about, can you even do an X-Men movie that is R-rated rather than PG-13? And I know that they wanted to be able to protect the tone of Deadpool, but still see if you could do the slightly softer version. You got a minute left to get a game? Okay. So there were just more months or even years that went by of the movie getting made. In the middle of Comic-Con, it was two years ago, Tim was at Comic-Con, and as he was driving home, the footage somehow leaked, and the internet did what it does at its best, which is it blew up. It showed people that it's possible to put Deadpool on the screen the right way, to put Deadpool on the screen in a way that is <laughs> real with the comic. Really created an uprising of some degree. It ended up becoming a real rallying cry for the fans out there when they saw exactly what Tim and Ryan were trying to do. The noise they made on social media was huge. It was huge for us, and they made enough <laughs> it for a long time. It didn't feel like a moment in time. Bad. They sustained that roar for months. I think the fans being overwhelmingly supportive of this take on the character, which is different than past takes on the character, really helps the studio feel like they're making the right decision when they okay a film like this, because it's risky. There's a very short list of suspects who might have peaked it on the internet. Paul and I are probably on that list, but we did not do it. When the test was did leave, we all called each other. Own up, we won't tell anyone. Like, no. I still bust Tim's ball saying that he's the one that leaked the test footage. I think it's just one of those things where you want to connect with the fans early on. You know, the fans really made me feel comfortable with what we were planning to do. There's a huge fan base already built in for Deadpool. They're the reason we're here making this movie. And I don't say that in any hyperbolic way. It's a fact. They have the largest catalyst to us making Deadpool. Everyone on this Deadpool team really understands that world and the tone that we're trying to get. And I think it's a rare thing. All of us are on set every minute of the day. We've all been here watching this thing come to life. Hi, no, I got pretty up all the way up. I got 18 seconds left. 18 seconds? Yeah. To figure out what you want for dinner? We're fucking dead. We're gonna go hungry. Look, we've gone longer than 18 seconds. You haven't figured nothing out. No, you had 18 seconds left on my game, and I'm gonna Oh, go. I thought you had 18 seconds left to figure out what we were gonna eat for dinner. Oh, oh I won't be here. Not that I need to be here, but. What do you need to be here for? That way I had to go to school tomorrow. Well, I grandma can just pick you up on her way back from the airport. She got John Pop on his hair for it. What? What? I got five seconds of Let me finish this game up. I got six seconds of it. Now four. What are you doing, my remote control? There it is. Why? Three, two. Stop my remote, didn't you? Game over, guys. Joy. Bye.